Welcome to another Digital Anarchy tutorial. I'm Jim Tierney, President of Digital Anarchy, and I'm going to talk about the basics of 3D Invigorator. We'll pick up where we left off in part one of the intro tutorial. In the last section, we talked about the basics of 3D and the 3D environment that makes up 3D Invigorator. And so now we'll take a look at the 3D objects themselves. We've been messing around with text, and now let's take a closer look at what can be done with these objects. And we'll also talk about Illustrator and 3D primitives and that stuff, but we'll start off with our text here. As I've already pointed out, we can select and adjust each character separately, or we can adjust the entire word at the same time. So let's select all the characters and take a closer look at the objects palette. And you can see I've rendered our 3D text here, so it looks a little bit fancier than it normally would. But we'll uh, switch back into normal mode and select our characters. And so let's take a look at the objects panel. There are essentially five sections to the objects panel. There's the top three rows, which allow you to select which object you want to work with, and gives you six buttons to control that object. You can delete it, you can duplicate it, you can move it to the center, reset it, and you can also clear all the objects in the scene. The second section varies a bit depending on what the object is. For text, it's where you can change the text making up the text block. We can click on Edit Text, and it'll bring up our text dialog box where we can adjust the point size, the font, what the text is, the spacing, kerning, scale, all that good stuff. In this case, we're just going to leave it alone. One thing to know about this, though, if you change the text or if you change the font, it'll reset the orientations and positions of everything. So if you've set up the characters in a custom arrangement like we have here, You'll need to redo all that if you change the font or if you change what the text actually says. So that's an important bit of info if you have went to a lot of trouble to set up your characters in a specific way. You'll definitely want to decide on the text beforehand or make sure that your client decides on the text beforehand. The third section is the info section. You can manually set the position, rotation, and scale of the object or objects. These are useful if you want to make slight adjustments or if you want to make you know, large adjustments like rotating everything by 90 degrees. If you use the UI controls, the, uh, the tools up in our second section over here, these values will update as you move the 3D characters around. The fourth section is the object smoothness. These are similar to the resolution of a still image. They're important both for the look of the 3D objects and the rendering speed, or the performance that you're going to see when you move the object or camera around. With a still image, the more pixels you have, the better looking the image will be. With 3D objects, it's not pixels, but polygons. And these are a little bit easier to see if I switch over to our wireframe mode. Actually, I'm going to change our background to back to white so we can see it even easier. Polygons are the squares that make up an object. As I adjust the preview smoothness, you can see the polygons increase or decrease as I increase or decrease the value correspondingly. The squares start off very large, resulting in surfaces that are very irregular, very angular. As I increase this, I get a lot more polygons, a lot more squares, and the surfaces become a little bit more like what you would expect. Curves start actually looking like curves, and you basically just get a lot more detail. Now this is the preview render. It affects how fast you can move the camera and objects, and this is particularly true if we set preview mode to best, which is this kind of shiny ball right here, meaning that we'll he we can see textures and reflections, and all sorts of interesting aspects of the our 3D objects. If you have a very fast machine, you can set this up to a very high amount, and it really won't make much of a difference. 
For slower machines, you'll want to set this lower so you can set things up without having to wait for Invigorator to render stuff out. You can see that if I grab my camera orbit tool and move around, I'm on a pretty fast machine, so you know things are moving pretty quickly. It doesn't matter that I've got our preview smoothness cranked all the way up. Things are still moving around and it's not really much of a problem. But even with a fast machine, if you get lots of objects in here with lots of complex textures, with reflections and transparency and all sorts of stuff, um, it can really start to slow down. When you're setting your scene up, you really want to be able to quickly rotate around and quickly move objects. And sometimes setting this down to a little bit lower amount will help you do that. The final smoothness is what you see when you click on the render preview button down here or when you go back out to Photoshop. So usually you have a lower resolution for the preview and a higher resolution for the final. Although there are still some differences between the two. For example, there's no anti-aliasing or bump maps available to you in the preview mode. That's only going to show up when we do our final render or when we click on render preview. And if I click on render preview, you can see the differences between the final mode and the preview mode. You can see things are much smoother. We have anti-aliasing. If we had bump maps on this, we'd be able to see the bumpy surface. And again, the higher that we set my final smoothness over here, the longer it's going to take to render. For something f with a couple objects that's pretty small, render times are not really going to be that big of a deal. But for much larger images with many objects in it, render times may be an issue. So you may want to optimize this by setting it to the lowest amount that's going to give you an acceptable quality. Before we get to the final section, let's switch to an Illustrator object. So far I've only shown how Invigorator works on text objects, but Illustrator objects behave the same way, so let's use one of those. First off, I'm going to select all of my characters here and delete them and then go up to Object and select Open Illustrator File. Now there's a whole separate tutorial on how to prepare Illustrator files, so we're not going to go over that here. We're just going to open up a pre-made file. And that file is this arrow.ai right here. And we can select that. And you can see that all of our info settings and object smoothness are all pretty much the same as they were for my text objects. There's really not a whole lot of difference between the way an Illustrator object behaves and the way the text objects behave. But we're not interested in these two panels. We already talked about those. So let's talk about the final section in the object panel. And that is the extrude and bevel settings.